I am 19 years old. I, uh, I started comedy when I was 15 years old. Uh, I, I was doing magic at the time. In, in magic, magicians will often steal each other's jokes, and it's not even considered stealing. It's just they care about the trick so the joke doesn't matter. But I started writing my own jokes for it, and then I just started liking that way more. And then eventually, do, when I was doing comedy magic, started I did like Club 54 yuck yucks once and I saw other stand-ups and and then I just got obsessed with that from there I just realized like it was the writing that I liked the most and so I dropped all magic and just I found out where I could do it in Hamilton and did it one night and then have been doing it like just as much as I could since I know you don't love this guy please put your hands together give a round of applause for my man man Mace Galone the, like minute before going on stage is an interesting mix of emotions because it's it's a weird like usually right before I'll get really nervous every time no matter what show it is whether it's a big show or like three people at Kaylee House but then usually as they like are like done introducing your name and you do have to walk up it's like a weird like calmness almost like because at that point all you can do is think about whatever you're going to say or whatever you want to talk about uh, I'll tell you guys, I had a strange interaction after a show recently. Uh, this guy came up to me in the washroom afterwards and asked if I wanted to buy some cocaine, <laughs> which is a strange choice for him. Uh, he was looking at the same thing you guys are looking at. And so uh, I'd say that by the time I'm grabbing the mic, it's like very, very calm, focused attitude. This isn't a new look for me. I wasn't wearing like a velvet tracksuit with a gold chain and a mustache. I look like the last drug I took was a Tylenol menstrual by accident. <laughs> you know, I'll use a phrase that Manolis Zontanos, another Hamilton comic, told me at the beginning. He said, treat it like a full-time hobby. You know, something that you commit to fully and you do it as much as you possibly can, but the hobby part is because at the end of the day, you're only doing it because you love it. And if you ever stop loving it, then you stop doing it. Uh, I'll tell you guys this too, uh, I'm a germaphobe. And uh, I told my friend that recently, and he goes, what are you, gay? <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> I bet it's just the opposite. I bet that once you introduce a man's asshole into your sex life, you're probably not getting hung up on shaking hands and touching doorknobs. <laughs> Probably never gonna see a guy Purell and then give a guy a rim job. Uh, I wasn't comfortable hearing myself say rim job either. Uh. My my favorite comics are like George Carlin. When it comes to bullshit, big time major league bullshit, you have to stand in awe in awe of the all-time champion of false promises and exaggerated claims, religion. And, uh, like, Bill Hicks. When did mediocrity and banality become a good image for your children? I want my children to listen to people who fucking rocked! I don't care if they died in puddles of their own vomit! I want someone who plays from his fucking heart! And my favorite is Doug Stanhope. Nationalism does nothing but teach you how to hate people that you never met. And all of a sudden you take pride in accomplishments you had no part in whatsoever and you brag about. You know. Guys who, their best bits, in my opinion, are the ones that they're about some idea that might be a little controversial or, or just like not as popular an opinion or just not a take on you know, a, a popular topic. Something that makes you think a bit more, like kind of like, ah, oh, I never thought of it that way. So I'm, a, I'm an atheist and uh, some people have asked me, oh, but, right, that's just a thing that I don't think, but. Uh, my mom was kind of religious. Uh, she, like, she kind of believes in God and we heard her mention it a few times, but it wasn't like we, we weren't like taught to believe in God or anything. Uh, my dad was an atheist and another, he also didn't really, teach us that he they both kind of just waited for us to approach them and then they would say here's what we think go read or go research it and figure it out for yourself
But to be homophobic is a different level of obsession. You have to be thinking about gay sex way more than the people that are having it. <laughs> gay people just think about it and then have it and then go watch True Blood. But uh, <laughs> you're sitting in your basement angrily making posters out of Bristol board, you know, like, God hates fags. Where's my glitter? <laughs> My parents were always right from when we were kids, like, whatever makes you happy, do that, but put in everything. Like, you know, don't half-ass it, you know, make it work. My sisters, I, I think I'm the most, like, just most myself with, and we joke around a lot and tell, like, stories to each other and stuff, and when I'm telling a story in that sense, I feel like I'm doing a great job, but that's because I'm just completely myself, and that's probably the closest to my sense of humor is when I'm joking around with my sisters. And then uh, then my mom, she's she loves it. Uh, yeah, um, I don't know, this, uh, I, I should probably tell you, I don't know if, my, my dad uh, passed away uh, earlier in 2013. And uh, they were all super supportive. My dad was like huge fan and, and uh, so my dad would, when I was starting to get interested in this stuff, he'd be the one the most that would like sit down with me and listen to my ideas. I'd come to him with like nothing, just like just ridiculous ideas that, of what I thought were jokes. And he'd be like, okay, uh, I kind of see what you're trying to do. And, uh, and, then, and then he'd talk with me and then through talking, I'd find more stuff and, and other, other ways I could make it a joke. And they'd both drive me to shows several times a week when I was in high school, and so I, it was me as a 15-year-old with either my mom or dad in a bar on a school night. It was ridiculous. So Stanhope uh, was my favorite comic, and uh, my dad knew that, and he was trying to, like I didn't, I wasn't aware of this, but he was trying to find a show that I could go to, but I was only 17, so none of them that were even close to where we lived, even like just over the border, I couldn't get into. They were all like, uh, like 19 or 21 plus. So what my dad did, I had no idea of this, and I, if I knew I probably would have been so embarrassed that I wouldn't have let him. I would have, but he emailed Doug Stanhope's manager and said, listen, my son is a big fan and I'd love to take him to a show. Where can I take him? And uh, he said, there's one show that I'd be able to get into and it was in Arizona. Yeah, so my whole, so then my, my dad came to me, he's like, listen, you're present your, all your presents for everything, birthday, Christmas, all this year is that we're going to go to Arizona and we're going to see Doug Stanhope live. Like, I lived in Toronto for a little while. I lived near what they called the gay neighborhood. But it was mostly just a regular neighborhood. There were still buildings and streets and a McDonald's. It wasn't like an open field of one winding, continuous circle jerk. You know? <laughs> Nobody's like, oh, we got to drive through the gay neighborhood. Flip on the windshield wipers. <laughs> I, I love Hamilton. There's nowhere around here or even in the country that I think I would rather be than Hamilton. I think it's more than just being comfortable with the scene. I, I think there is something kind of different about Hamilton. You know, uh, I don't know exactly what it is, but I know that a lot of the, the other comics are some of my best friends, and I, I, feel, I feel like there's something different about the Hamilton comedy scene. Maybe it's the fact that if we're all, we are all so different, but we're all super passionate about comedy. If you go to any given show, you're not going to see a string of comics in a row that you're like, oh, that's all kind of the same thing. It's going to be like both ends of the spectrum, everything in between. You'll see a guy that's over the top, that's yelling and doing crazy stuff. You'll see a guy that's talking kind of quietly into the mic, and, and you'll see every type of personality. Whatever it is, I love the Hamilton comedy scene and, I, and I'm really happy to be in it for now. And then it just kept getting like crazier and crazier because we ended up just by chance staying in the same hotel as Doug Stanhope. And before the show, I see him walk by and I f freaked out and I ran over my sister. I was like, that's, that's Doug Stanhope. And uh, 
And she's like, you should go say hi. And so I was like nervous and thinking about <laughs> what I was going to say. And then I ended up going up to him like, hi, Doug, uh, I'm a big fan. I just wanted to say uh, uh, I'm from Canada, but I just want to say that I'm looking forward to the show. Uh, and then I was ready to walk away. And he's like, oh, you're the kid from Canada. And so then he introduced us to his girlfriend. And then he's uh, he's like, listen, I got to go. But bingo, that's her name. Well, she'll get you a good seat. And so then we went with her. There was this huge lineup by that time and she took us right to the front row uh with her and then we sat and watched the show with her and then afterwards they were taking a picture for his next album they took a bunch of pictures but they they used this one so that's her and that's me and i it's i don't know it's really cool